Ah. It's tabletop time. I'm Dave. I'm Jen. I'm Murray. And today we are going to finally finish the Stormbird. Now, I don't know how, but it's broken in a few places since the last time we looked at this. So we're gonna have to fix it before we can paint it. What do you think of that, Murray? Yes, I think it's a good thing. The little pixies must have been in here overnight and just done this. <laughs> Well, I broke it. So we're going to be painting this up in the Stormbird fashion and then securing it in its permanent home in our Stormbird hanger board. Blah, 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 blah. Our Stormbird hanger bird board. Yes. Our Check the storm, storm blurb beneath. Stormbird hanger board. What do nice. you think, Jen? It's going to be great. Thank you. So first on the agenda is spraying this whole thing. Uh, this is going to take probably at least two cans of paint because this is very big and resin is a bit thirsty. I feel like typically with these bigger models, you usually do it in uh, parts or pieces, but uh, we've decided to glue this giant thing together. So yeah. well, all the all the turrets are still separate, so they'll make things a little bit easier. I think that's something that's really difficult with the Stormbird as opposed to a lot of other models. These large Forge World flyers need to be assembled because if you don't assemble them, the pieces can be warped and it won't fit together once you've actually painted it. The Stormbird is completely pushing what it's realistic to hold and paint. So overall, the experience of painting it is not really an enjoyable one for me. All right, so for those of you wondering, Murray, didn't Dave paint some of the interior of the Stormbird the first time? Yes, he did. And I have thought of this. Ta-da, piece of paper and his little glowing paint job of all the alarm klaxons is safe. You know what, let's push off January's first week video. Let's just put it out next week. And we can only do this thanks to our sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. If you don't know what Raid Shadow Legends is, truly, you've never been on the internet before watching this video. Raid Shadow Legends has been downloaded by over 80 million players worldwide. It has over 650 characters. And not only that, Raid Shadow Legends is completely free to play. So my absolute favorite thing to do in games is come up with the perfect combo. Ensuring a mastery over my team by blending different combinations of champions together and utilizing all of their unique abilities to absolutely min-max the most out of every encounter. If a game has really nice artwork, has some really cool characters, then I'm gonna give it a go. I really wanna hear about your top 10 champions, but I can only do that over some food. Let's go get some lunch. Yeah. Hey, Jen. Ooh, oh, wrestling in the house. And Raid's got something extra special happening in their game right now. That's right, Ronda Rousey's coming, baby. And she's an all-exclusive character that you can download with our code. How you feeling there, buddy? Oh, oh, I wish she'd come and beat you up. You can get Ronda for free right now, whether you're a first-time player or a long-time veteran. You just need to play for seven days from now till the 20th of February to get Ronda all to yourself. And to celebrate the new year, you can get some exclusive goodies, such as the season of the Forge Pass and the Plarium Points program. I need to get back to playing Raid to earn my Plarium Points and get my good in-game good goods. My goodies. So, don't be like Dave. Download Raid Shadow Legends now and get your free epic champion Jotun, 100k silver, 50 gems, and two epic tomes. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Let me go! Yeah! Raid! All right, it is the end of the year. Mari and Jen aren't here anymore. It's literally the last day of filming for the year and I have done everything I can while still being productive to do all the work around the studio I could while leaving this till absolute last because we're going to be painting this in the first week of January. It's a daunting task, but if I can get the airbrushing done today and most of the base colors in, I think it'll leave us at a really comfortable picking up point for next year. So ain't nothing to it but to do it. Continuing the trend of aerosol painting, I grabbed a couple of greys. The dark grey from Vallejo and also the light grey. I painted it pretty much 50% with the Zenithal with the grey, but the light grey I just dusted on the top to give a very light highlight. Once the bulk of the colours were done, I really wanted to give it that aeronautical feel of having some patterns and markings. So I used some masking tape to mask out a couple of areas that would become stripes on the wings. Yeah, these little additions to wings on aircraft really help to sell the silhouette and just make it look a bit bigger, bit longer. Now, as with all space bears, these stripes ended up in their tertiary color of red. I brought out the airbrush for this one, spraying in dark red and then a little highlight of a brighter red in the center. Yeah, 
we've had a bit of practice doing this with our night. Now with the airbrush paint dry, or at least mostly dry, I couldn't help but get excited about the fun part of masking. And I immediately went in and grabbed that masking tape and we get some very satisfying peelies. So with a massive model such as this that already has a bunch of the base colors in, we really needed to paint all the gubbins, all the little bits and areas and panels. And that meant hand painting. And hand painting models this big is tedious to say the least. So naturally being lazy, I grabbed all the parts that were separate and started working on them. And Jen. Did you say big models? I love painting big models. It's my favorite thing to do. Well, I'm glad that there are differences between all of us because it is my least favorite thing to do. So thankfully, Jen, you were on hand to save me and do the base coating of the actual Stormbird's body. For the void shield generators themselves, I wanted to make them look a little bit different. So this is the only area that I used this really cool cobalt colored paint from Scale 75. This paint is like a blue metallic and I think represents pretty well the esoteric rare materials that the Mechanicus may have used in its creation. For any areas of red on the model that I couldn't airbrush, I just did a hand gradient using mixes of the same color and a paintbrush towards a highlight area at the top. None of these areas needed to be painted to a incredible high standard as this is after all terrain and it's going to be covered in streaking grime and snow this model is terrain you mean we can't use this in our kill team match <laughs> <laughs> no funnily <laughs> enough we can't use this stormbird in a kill team match Seeing the doors that I 3D printed and designed for the Stormbird with some paint on them was super satisfying. And for all of the Space Bears emblems across the ship, we went for the slightly off white that we've been painting the Space Bears paw in across all of our videos. If you're just watching this video now and you'd like to find out the journey of the Stormbird and how we made custom Stormbird doors, for example, the video is up in the cards above. busy painting away all of the little pieces of the Stormbird, I went in with doing some base coats of all of the separate parts on the Stormbird. We're we finally getting to paint all the little additions, like the, the pelts and the skulls. It's finally happening. <laughs> Absolutely. Adding some colour to the Stormbird definitely makes it pop and seem more alive. I based a lot of the colours and decisions on the competition winners that we had in a previous video. If you'd like to check those out, the card is at the top of the screen for you to have a look at. Now, one of the huge focal points on this piece are these giant... Uh, turbines. Tur thank you, Murray. Hey. Giant, giant turbines. These things are massive, and I decided to paint them in a beautiful silver colour, because why not? So at this point in the paint job, I wanted to add a couple more focal points to the Stormbird. It was looking a little bit dull. So I decided to add a bit of extra red to some of the panels. Yeah, those extra sort of random panels really help sell things, uh, especially history of painting Tau. It really helps, I think. <laughs> So naturally it came time to highlight the model and we've got to highlight this up and add a bit of detail. With this four kilo model, you just hold it in one hand and get a fine detail brush and just do some line highlighting, panel line every single panel, is that? Yeah, it's how Da Vinci would have done it. Uh, yeah, so I took a different approach to this and I decided to dry brush it instead. This thing weighs an absolute ton and I actually really enjoyed the way the dry brush landed on this particular model. It kind of created its own scratches and made it sort of dusty. Now, something I knew I wanted to do from the very start is deal with this canopy. And something I thought of after watching a very good film known as Top Gun Maverick was I wanted to put a cover on the canopy. You see this at airfields a lot in movies or in any military footage where planes with those glass canopies often have a cover over them to protect them from the weather and the elements. Yeah, even just a standard car cover. So to do this, I thought, well, what's the best way? And given the size of it, I decided to just mix up a 
massive amount of green stuff. I took care to actually cut the inside streaks of the green stuff away, which can help blend it and get rid of these weird chunks of the yellow part of the green stuff that doesn't mix. Yeah, it's already sort of sort of like half set in the middle. Yeah, they look like little flakes. Anyway, it didn't work. There were still heaps of those flakes in it. It really pissed me off. I didn't <laughs> know why. So uh, green stuff experts out there, can you explain what are those weird yellow squares that just don't mix that are like a plastic flake in green stuff and how do we fix them? With the green stuff mixed together and run through the pasta roller a couple of times, I just cut it into a square and then pressed it deeply on top of that canopy to get some nice impressions. And then Jen, I handed it over to you to make some rope to tie it onto the cockpit. That's right. I grabbed some of the twine that we have here at the studio that I've used for various projects. I dumped this into some PVA and water and waited for it to dry and wrapped it around the edges of the Stormbirds up baby wings. I don't really know what these parts are, but I'm just I'm just going to call them baby wings. Anyway, I wrapped these around and made sure that they looked like they were attached properly with two on the side and one around the front. I also painted everything just in a matte black so then Dave could come in and paint it whatever colour he wanted. Sticking grime, sticking grime. Not before we glue stuff on. Uh. Yeah, yeah, Jen, got a little bit premature there. So the first thing I did is get some super glue and I glued in all the bits that had been hanging off the model. Now, something you'll notice is still not on the model are the six missiles that come with the Stormbird. I decided not to glue these on the underside because I thought it'd be way cooler if we paint them up and have them on a trolley beside the Stormbird. So you'll never guess, but the track wash, our favorite streaking grime product that Jazza loves to use at the studio is completely out. Uh, <gasps> it's almost like he's used it all. So I decided to just make my own grime. I mixed up two of these MIG grimes together and a fun little tip if you don't want to spill and you're trying to pour into a really small bottle, just pour down a stick and it basically goes directly into the hole. Yeah, hope you learned something from that's, this. That's brilliant. That's some life hacks right there. What the heck? Now, you know, it is Australian summer when the ground looks like this, the sky looks like that and it's bloody hot. Perfect weather for some streaking grime. But before I do some streaking grime, I've got to put on a matte varnish. So I'm gonna go and do some aerosol spraying and uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too hot. <laughs> Now the final step after streaking griming is, of course, you get some white spirits and you bring a lot of it back. This was really difficult on a Stormbird. The streaking grime doesn't work in the same way as it does on small miniatures. It's not so easy to sink into recesses and just disappear. You get the speed of shading an entire single 28 mil model. You're sort of losing that time because you have to go over the entire model with this woolly dobber. There's these areas where I pretty much pulled back all of the streaking grime so they look a bit cleaner and it made some nice variants in the armor panels. Yeah, you get some uh, streaking going where like the wind burn and atmospheric re-entry has sort of been left on the panels. Now with this all done, Murray, you have basically dodged this entire project. I have. Uh, completely and, coincidentally. But I know that you had a lot of fun and put a lot of work into building the skulls and the chains around the engines and adding a bunch of life to the Stormbird. With that said, I think it's time for a couple of final touches before we put on some snow. So Murray, you grabbed some fine layer brushes and just touched up a few of those detail areas. Just a couple more little details to give a bit more story to this bird. After that was done, we sprinkled a, a little bit of snow. We went a little bit more gentle on this than we had on the board because I like the idea that this has been rolled out onto the tarmac maybe a couple of hours ago rather than it sitting out of the hangar for a long time. All right, with that all done, I'm super excited to take a look at this both off and on the Stormbird hangar this board. Is, this has been a hell of a journey and it's gonna be so satisfying to see its completion.
always, a huge thank you to all of our Patreons over on Patreon. Without you guys, we couldn't make awesome projects like these ones, and we have so many more projects to look forward to in 2023. If you'd like to join up and consider supporting us, all of the links are down in the description below. Look at this thing that we made. It's pretty cool. It's done. <laughs> well, it's finally finished. That's Yay. so exciting. I'm pretty happy with the results. We're exploring how we can do battle reports in a way that is actually feasible within production and makes sense. So we're gonna come back to that for now. Let's consider this project finished, but know that we will at some stage in the future make a battle report. We're still, uh, we still have our Age of Sigma battle report in post-production limbo. Uh, and once that's done, we'll look at this as the well, actually, the cathedral. And then we have first. a cathedral, yeah. <laughs> the cathedral is first. It's never yeah. ending. So one day in the future, we'll use this to play Kiltini yeah, It'll be great. Nevertheless, we've made a pretty cool Space Bears diorama. That's right. And thank you to our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Don't forget to use that code so you can get Ronda Rousey in your game today. As well as all those extra freebies. Including Jotun. He's mm. pretty cool. Cool, thanks. And cut. Is that, is that the tape? Well, you've never seen your boss make it before.